Uh, let's cross now over to Tom Bauer, author of Rebel Prince, something of a specialist in the career and life of King Charles III. Um, Tom, thank you very much. And one thing that's being pointed out quite a lot here is that Charles was one of the longest serving heirs to the throne that we've had in modern English history. And please correct me if my verbiage is wrong with that. He's had to wait so long to get on the throne. He's 75 years old and now he's got a major health issue. It must be terribly uh, frightening and disappointing. Well, it's very sad, undoubtedly, and uh, it's quite serious however much the palace uh, handles it. Um, it's very uh, stressful for him and for the country. Uh, he's waited a long time. I think he wanted to and still wants to uh, impose a sort of a Carolean era in the history of Britain. And we must just hope that uh, the prognosis is good and he'll recover quickly. Because by all accounts, from the information we do have from the palace and from even the clues we get from what Queen Camilla says during her official visits, is that Charles has really embraced the royal duties that he has been waiting his whole life to perform. Uh, one would assume that he's going to really miss uh, being out in public for however long he needs to be. Well, I think that's true. And I think that uh, King Charles has tried very hard over the last month since the coronation to become part of the fabric of Britain as the monarch. Uh, I, I have thought over the past weeks that he didn't look very well. And so it's turned out. I mean, he, he hasn't looked since Christmas uh, on top form. He is, as you rightly say, very fit. But, you know, at 75, uh, prostrate enlargement is always an unfortunate but inevitable <laughs> with men, men of our age. But nevertheless, uh, it isn't uh, fatal. Uh, the treatment nowadays is phenomenal compared to 20 years ago. And the survival rate is uh, excellent too. So I think that uh, while we're all apprehensive and we all fear that uh, he may not recover quickly, I think uh, he's going to get the best treatment in the world now. Yeah, I mean, the king will not have to want for anything. And we can just hope that the recovery is speedy. I'm sure he'll try his hardest to get back to his duties and his family as fast as possible. Now, I think you make an interesting point there about him speaking out um, about this diagnosis. And, you know, Sarah and I were just discussing the reassurance, the information and the transparency that the country wants. I think it's fair to say that modern societies want even more transparency. We're all online, we're all on social media. We want as much information as possible now. Is he doing something quite pioneering here from a royal perspective by being so clear about his diagnosis and sharing that information, not only about the prostate treatment that he recently had, but about this cancer as well? Well, he is. But on the other hand, if he disappeared from view, uh, the rumour mill would be absolutely volcanic. And so I don't think he has a choice but to uh, give some information about what is happening uh, and how he's going to be treated. I think the truth is that uh, King Charles and the Queen as well um, have hoped that Prince William and Kate will take a lot of the burdens away from them. I mean, they aren't uh, young anymore, and the monarchy is in good hands with the Prince and Princess of Wales. Uh, of course, there is the problem that Kate isn't well too. That is a, a double problem. But I do think that um, the country can be assured that the monarchy is safe in their hands uh, and we're going to just um, have to settle down for a few weeks of uh, hoping that uh, medicine will take its course on both the King and the Princess of Wales. And look, it wouldn't be right to speak to the author of Rebel Prince. I know that was originally about King Charles, but without asking about Harry as well and the news that we've got that he's likely to be coming to the UK in the next few days. A rare visit uh, back, strained relations obviously within the family. From what you know of studying and uh, watching Charles for all this time, do you think that will be a welcome visit? Well, uh, I'm also the author of Revenge, the biography of Meghan and Harry, uh, and I'm very suspicious of the both of them. I think that Harry has behaved appallingly and uh, after all, he did not send any good wishes to his father once the news about the prostate operation was announced. So I do think that Harry uh, coming back to England at this sudden moment um, is in some way seeking some publicity. I, I I'm, I'm never believe that he is going to reconcile himself to uh, William. Um, it's going to be a great problem. I mean, he hasn't even got anywhere to live of his own in England anymore. 
he's declared, in my view, uh, some sort of undeclared war against uh, the monarchy here. Uh, let's see how it plays out. Let's see whether he'll use this opportunity to mend fences. But uh, really, I think he's got a huge amount of mountaineering to do to restore relations with uh, Prince William. Uh, the king, obviously, as father, is very, very keen to build uh, a relationship uh, and to mend fences. But I think he'll find it very hard with Harry. He's not an easy man. Well, that was going to be my next question to you, because despite um, as tense and frayed as family relations can get over various things in life, we all know this, uh, some, a big medical emergency often brings families together. Don't you think this could be the point that, in which we see this kind of coming back, a reunification of the family? Well, I'm sure many people will hope that. I just don't have that sort of expectation, because I think Harry has his own agenda. And I think he's a very selfish person. And I can't really believe that in the deepest of his hearts, he really is thinking of his father and not of himself. But, you know, one hopes I may be proved wrong. I've studied the man very carefully. I don't have that much trust in him because I think he's behaved appallingly towards his family in Britain and let them down dreadfully. But perhaps he'll have seen the light. Perhaps in England he will suddenly come to terms and apologise. And I think that's what it would need. It would need a very, very public apology by Harry to reconcile him both with uh, his father, uh, his brother, and I think also the majority of the British public. Well, we shall have to wait and see. Tom Bauer, thank you very much for joining us this evening.